Hey guys, it's Nels. We're back with another episode of Sled Tech today. And right here is the all new next generation suspension system for the Indy VR1 Dynamics. Polaris design, Polaris exclusive, and, and redefining trail performance for 2025. Let's dive into all the details on this new technology. When we launched Indy VR1 in, in 2021 on the new Matrix platform, it was all about trail performance, just the ultimate performance for hard charging, fast riding trail rides, no matter what the trail looks like, what condition it's in. For 2025, Dynamics takes that to the next level. Dynamics is the most advanced suspension system on snow, and it's all designed to take that, that trail performance that Indy vr ones known for and just move it right up to, to the next level. At its core, Dynamics is a semi-active suspension system. So it's a four electronic shocks that are controlled by uh, the IMU, which we'll get into in a little bit, really adjusting all four shocks electronically constantly as you're riding to give you the best ride for your chosen mode. There's a lot to dive into with Dynamics, so we'll kind of go piece by piece here. The, the first, we'll talk about how the system works as a whole. So the dynamic system uh, is really quite simple in, in what it does and how it works. It's really built around the IMU. So that's an inertial measurement unit. It's a, a physical box under the hood. And what it's doing is it's measuring the inertia of the vehicle. So it's constantly measuring what the vehicle is actually doing, how it's moving, velocity, pitch, roll, yaw, like acceleration, forward and backward. Anything that the vehicle is doing uh, that's anything other than perfectly flat, flat, perfectly stable and going at the exact same speed, it's taking in all that information and reacting accordingly. The other two inputs that it, that it gives to um, the, the IMU to kind of dictate what the suspension is doing is acceleration and braking. So brake input and then acceleration input, both throttle position, ramp speed, how fast you're accelerating, things like that. That's all the dynamic system takes in. So that's the information that the, the brain of the system, the IMU is taking in, the, the sensors inside the IMU itself, and then acceleration and deceleration. From there, it's controlling electronically all four uh, Fox Live Valve 2.0 shocks on the sled to give you the, the best ride for, for your chosen mode. So um, we'll dive into the, the shocks really quickly. Um, the, the shocks are Fox Live Valve 2.0, uh, compression shocks. So we're uh, adjusting the compression here, full two inch body. Fox Live Valve is top of the line uh, electronic suspension technology. So we're really excited to put these here on, on the NDVR1 with Dynamics. The second piece with Dynamics I want to touch on is, is kind of what I just said. It's all four shocks. So it's the only semi-active suspension system on snow that controls all four shocks. So the two front, uh, front uh, ski shocks you can see here, and then the both front and rear track shocks in the back. Now, the, the front track shock is what makes it unique. It's the only one that controls that front track shock. And you know we like to say internally, if we could only control one of the four shocks, that's probably the one we would pick. The front track shock controls the balance of the vehicle forward and back. If you think back to when we talked, you know, launched Axis and the, the new riding position, it was all about lighter bite. You could lean forward and kind of get up over the skis and you get more ski pressure and bite down. You could lean back and uh, get, get the skis a little lighter and, and have a, a more rearward bias. And now with Dynamics, the front track shock is doing that for you. Um, so the exclusive use of the front track shock, along with, of course, the other three shocks on the sled, is really what gives Dynamics the, the ability to do all of the things that it does so, so well. So as the IMU is taking in information, it's taking in acceleration, deceleration, it's constantly reading what the vehicle's doing, the terrain it's going over, and electronically controlling the four shocks uh, that, we, that we talked about to deliver the best ride. And um, it, it's really geared around active events is what we call it. So when you're riding a, a trail sled like an Indy VR1 down the trail, you're very, very rarely only going perfectly straight, perfectly flat at perfectly the same speed. You're almost always accelerating, decelerating, going over a bump, turning slightly, leaning to one side, moving around something. So the system is really built around active events. And there's, there's three active events that the system's always looking for. The first is uh, kind of a combo acceleration, deceleration. So as the sled accelerates, Dynamics will feel that acceleration both through the throttle input and then the, the roll and pitch of the vehicle towards the back. And it'll stiffen the rear track shock and use the front track shock to kind of manipulate the balance between ski pressure and, and rearward traction, right? You still need some mechanical traction in the back 
to deliver really fast acceleration with really consistent traction as you're accelerating. Likewise, when you hit the brakes and you're starting to, to go into what we call a braking event, the IMU is going to recognize that truly really with the opposite. The brakes are going to come on, the throttle is going to roll down, the vehicle is going to pitch forward. It's going to stiffen up those front ski shocks in order to keep the vehicle from nose diving too much, keep you nice and planted while keeping ski pressure. And then again, use that front track shock to, to keep the balance of the sled forward and back how you want it. We don't want to push too hard down on the skis where we kind of pull the sled back up and lose some ski pressure. You also don't want too much roll where all of a sudden you've got no traction and you can't brake. Uh, so it uses that front track shock along with the ski shocks in the front to keep the sled perfectly balanced as, as you're braking and keep it under control. So when you're coming into a corner, you're really asking the, the snowmobile to do three different things, sometimes all at one time. You're on the brakes, you're trying to turn, and then you're trying to get on the gas and get, get back out of the corner. What Dynamics is able to do is it's able to balance all three of those events essentially perfectly as you're going through the corner to keep you flat, plenty of ski pressure to keep the skis turning and keep traction and not push through the corner, but then balance the traction in the back so when you do get back on the gas, you've got plenty of traction to, to get you out of the corner. Some kind of details on how it does that. So you come into the corner, it senses it's rolling to the outside, stiffen that outside ski shock, use the front track shock to keep balance through the corner as you're going through. Uh, make sure you got enough pressure down on the skis to maintain the turn. And then as you roll onto the throttle, as you, you come out of the turn, it's going to slowly transfer that traction to the back. Uh, so that you know it stiffens up the rear track shock a bit, but kind of roll the vehicle balance towards the track so you get that traction to get out of the corner while maintaining the ski pressure while you need it, while you're still in that turning event. The result really is, is Dynamics goes through the corner like a Formula One car. It, it's truly incredible uh, when you're going through high speed corners, tight twisties, whatever they are, because the sled is just doing all of that work for you through the Dynamics system and, and the electronic shocks. So the last active event that Dynamics is, like I said, always looking for is airborne. So um, obviously when you jump the sled, get off the ground, we want to stiffen up the compression so that the landing, you don't bottom out, right? Provide that bottom out resistance. What's really unique about Dynamics is because it uses the IMU, so an inertial measurement unit, rather than, say, sensors on the shocks themselves, is a lot of times when, when the sled feels like it's airborne, when you're going over like a big roller on the trail, you feel like the sled's airborne, the rear track shock is usually still on the ground. The rear of the track is usually still on the ground. Likewise, when you're rolling through a big G out or something, you kind of feel the sled roll in and kind of come down in the bottom of the G out and back up. Uh, the sled didn't actually ever leave the ground. With Dynamics, because of the IMU, airborne means that the snowmobile has less than one G of force. So anytime the sled is unweighted relative to, to normal gravity, it doesn't have to look for the shocks to be all the way extended out because sometimes the vehicle's unloaded or less than one G when one of the shocks is still on the ground, like a big roller when you're coming over a, a big trail roller. Because of that, it's able to provide uh, bottom out resistance and increase the compression whenever the sled comes back down, whether the vehicle left the snow at all, uh, all the way or, or not. So when you hit those big trail rollers, you kind of hit that G out and kind of unweight and slam back down. The system will engage airborne mode, which stiffens the right shocks in order to keep you from bottoming out and keep that momentum as you keep going forward. So Dynamics has three rider selectable modes. Uh, they're quick switch modes selected right on this, uh, the switch here right on the dash. And they use this, all use the same active events we just talked about. They're all looking for cornering, acceleration, braking, airborne, all those things we just looked at. But it's really a, almost a sliding scale of how you want to ride for the day. So the first is comfort mode. That starts the shocks uh, near the, the softest that they'll go. And it's the most comfortable mode, of course, of the three. It's really designed for really easy trail riding if you just want to kind of cruise back on a, on a rougher Sunday trail. Um, it, it's all about comfort. It's got light ski pressure, so it's got less steering effort. It's a little bit lighter in the skis and just generally comfortable and easy to ride. The middle mode is called Rally, and Rally is the kind of the core performance mode of Dynamics. It's got a very wide range, and it's really meant for spirited trail riding. Um, whether you're in the tight twisties, you're on the, the all-out uh, big high-speed sweepers, big turns, uh, more rougher trails, whatever it is, Rally is, is really the core use mode for most trail riding. Um, like I said, it's got a very wide range and is and it says able to adapt quite a bit. It starts on the lower side of the uh, the compression level of the shocks, but ramps up quickly to account for all the the more advanced and higher speed riding or, or rougher riding that you're doing. 
The last mode is extreme. Um, extreme is for that kind of top couple percent of the riding that you're going to be doing typically. Uh, bigger jumps, a uh, really, really rough trailer. If you just want to see how stiff the system gets, it's pretty cool. Extreme will start uh, closer to the top of, of what the shocks are capable of and then comp the compression will ramp up from there. The cool thing about these three modes is they're all speed sensitive. So what that means is comfort starts, you know, lower near the, the lower side of the uh, compression level of the shocks. But if you start going faster, start going 50, 60 miles an hour in comfort mode, it's going to naturally ramp up the compression to account for the speed that you're going. Uh, even if you're in comfort mode, if you are going that fast, you're going to need more compression to maintain the comfort you're looking for. So dynamics accounts for that. Likewise, in extreme mode, uh, if you're going slower, you know, you're cruising around 10, 15 miles an hour, it's going to soften the shocks up uh, more than you might think because uh, you're going really slow. There, there's nothing you can encounter at 10 miles an hour per se where you'd need the full compression level of the shocks. That speed sensitivity, uh, especially in rally mode, kind of that core mode, is what enables such a wide range of, of riding. When you're going through tight twisties where you're really only going 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour through the corner or big high speed sweepers, the system can account for all of that depending on what speed you're going. Dynamics is only available on Indy VR1, so every uh, Indy VR1 with Dynamics will, of course, come with the 7S display. This, the 7S display has a dedicated Dynamics screen that you can select to have up in view as you ride your snowmobile, and it shows you some really cool information real time, live, as, as you're riding. The first on the left here is the throttle and brake input along with the speed. So if you watch NASCAR qualifying and you see the, the circle graph that they got up on the screen that shows how fast they're going, how hard they are into the throttle, when they get on the brakes. It's very similar to that. You can watch it all, all live right there on the screen. On the right hand side is the accelerometer for the IMU. So this is a, a very simplified representation of what the IMU is feeling and taking in. Um, you'll see the green dot there in the middle with the kind of uh, gradient around it. As the sled rolls, pitches, goes up and down, whatever it is, you'll see that green dot move around and it shows where the inertia of the snowmobile is at any given moment and kind of a cool view as to how the IMU is taking in that information and then you'll see the reaction in the four shock positions that you see there. So four bars here. Um, the shocks are not 10 positions only. They're more of a continuously adjustable shock, uh, but represented here in 10 kind of uh, bars, starting with green at the, at the bottom, getting into orange and then red for more extreme. So you can see the target shock position there for all four shocks uh, and the target compression setting that the IMU is communicating out. So that was a lot of information and a lot of detail, and there's even more that's patented that we aren't gonna talk about here today. But dynamics as a whole, what does it do for you out on the trail? It's a system on a trail sled that lets you have really soft, compliant ride in comfort mode when you want it, and even in rally when you're going over those small bumps or the little trail chatter. You get into the corner, no matter how hard you want to go through the corner, it's nearly perfect flat cornering in, in every single corner. And then when you want to step it up, you want to go fast, you want to hit the rougher trails, or that Sunday afternoon trail gets super rough, the system just sucks it right up. Uh, and is super bump compliant as you're going through. It's more confident under acceleration and braking. The sled doesn't dance around under braking. It's not uh, out of control when you're accelerating. And when you go airborne or you unweight the snowmobile, you hit that big roller, it's gonna catch you and provide that bottom out resistance you're looking for. It is truly a complete next generation level of trail performance that you can snow check in your Indy VR1. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Sled Tech, going over all the awesome new details on this really cool dynamic system available on Indy VR1. That's all we got for today. We'll see you guys next time.